Hi guys, JP from FSI panel. On this video, we will see how you can fly now very quick uh, patterns using the PMDG 737 600 to 900 using FSI panel 2020 advanced edition. It is the same feature, beta feature that has been implemented on the Phoenix A320. It is now available on the PMDG 737. This is if you want to fly a quick patterns just to practice your procedures and your takeoff approach briefing and landing. So let me show you how you can do that. I just loaded here the 737-800 in Kennedy runway 31 right and we will try a left or right hand. Let's make a left hand. Uh, let's try a right hand pattern in Kennedy. All right, so let's jump in the cockpit and see what we have to do. Okay, here we are in the cockpit of the 737. As you can see, I haven't done anything. We don't have the light sets. We don't have the start switches. We have a wrong information here on the um, precision panel, 35,000 feet and 50. This is completely wrong. We do have a nothing in the nav radio. So basically, the aircraft is just loaded with engines running. So make sure, make sure you have engines running. IRS align. And now the first thing you want to do is to uh, define your training weight. So you want to know, you want to practice, for example, landing with five tons of fuel. Of course, feel free to set that in pounds. That doesn't change anything and set your payload as well as you wish so right now i have an aircraft which is at 61 ton for my training that's all i need to do and from there i will start fsi panel and we are going to program this uh, right hand pattern in kennedy runway 31 right so let's start fsi panel okay we are in fsi panel as always first thing you want to make sure is that you have the pmdg 737 800 detected or any other series that you're flying 600 to 900 and make sure you are flying, you are sitting on the correct runway. So right now my aircraft is on runway 31 right. So I need to select here runway 31 right. That's very important because the whole pattern will be computed based on the input you make here in FSI panel. Once this is done, click on select fix. And now you have this quick traffic pattern beta available right there. And you just have to select left hand or right hand vectors. And then when we click the button here, then FSI panel will start working on your pattern. So let's click a right hand pattern and see what happened. All right, here we are in the cockpit. You can see 4,000 feet has been set. And you see now on the first officer FMC, we have to do a couple of steps here. The first thing here, select the runway where you depart. So the only thing you have to do here is click on runway 31 right. That's the one you are sitting at right now. And click acknowledge. Then FSI panel will compute here for us the uh, traffic pattern. It's not a traffic pattern. It's basically a pattern that allows you to practice your uh, procedure. So this is done just now. We will check it in a minute. And then FSI panel will ask you to select what kind of approach you want to practice. So if you want to practice a VORDME, if you want to practice a localizer or air nav approach, feel free to select the approach that you want to practice. Right now, I will try the ILS. 31 right so i'll do that right there so we can see what's happening so i just have to select here my approach so i will select ils 31 right that's all i need to do and then i need as per the instruction to make sure my routing is correct so i will just execute that and now i will look for example in the plan page what we have here in the box so what you want to do here is clear the discontinuity if you have any discontinuity. So if we go in the next page and we select, let's say here, 20 miles and we go step by step, we can see that we are going five miles straight ahead. Then we are going to turn here to join downwind. We are at the end of the downwind at the waypoint 03 and then we are turning on final. Now, what is very important, you can see that there is a couple of points right there on your final you don't want to select a point which is basically farther down your runway and then therefore therefore the, the fmc will believe that we're turning left instead of turning toward the runway so the next waypoint that i have after the whiskey papatongo 04 which is right there it's malde so this is the one you want to select so what you do here is simply select malde and put it right there execute that's the only thing you have to do that's what fsi panel asked you to do then click again on acknowledge 
and the rest will be done. Now we are going to have the zero fuel weight, the reserve, cost index and cruise altitude that will be set. And we are going to have the performance that allows you to take off on basically any runway which is compatible with 737. So you feel free to, uh, to compute again this uh, speed performance based on your actual inputs and weather. And if you just want to practice, these numbers will make sure you get airborne. All right, so all the routing has been done. Now we are going to check what FSI panel has done in our cockpit and we will try the circuit. So let's go back in the captain's seat and have a look at what has been done. Okay, so I'm ready to depart. What we can see here is we have the flight directors turned on, auto throttle. We have the ILS course on both sides. We have the runway heading. We have the altitude 4,000 feet, which is the uh, circling altitude, the one we are uh, chosen for this short scenario. We have as well the auto brake RTO, the flaps are at five, and we have the complete routing inserted here in the box. So basically, we should be able to do a complete uh, patterns. We will see that. We have the ILS runway 31 right selected, and if we look into the precision, we have 4,000 feet and airport elevation, which has been set. The lights are on, ready for departure. We have the engine start switches to continue so with the right igniters, and we have the strobe lights on. We should have the TCAS on as well. We can see that right there, and basically, we are just ready to depart for this short scenario. So let's do this short flight and see how it's managed in, uh, if we use Elnav and Vinav all the way. All right, so all is parking brake. We are clear for takeoff. And before taking off, in fact, I just want to show you one more thing that you can do with the 737 if you have FSI Panel Advanced Edition. You can save the snapshot. Now you've, you've made everything you need to do this circuit. Imagine you would like to fly it a couple of times and you don't want to go through the same procedure again. Then you could take a snapshot. The snapshot will work only in Kennedy Runway 31, right? But the feature that I just show you will be available on any runway in the world. You just select the runway and then FSI panel will compute the pattern for you. So here what we could do is basically take a snapshot. So let me show you that quickly. In FSI panel, you just go take snapshot. And here we will just say, for example, right hand pattern. And right turn pattern GFK. Three, one, right. Save the snapshot. Go back in the simulator. That is going to take a couple of seconds. You are going to get a confirmation message that the snapshot is saved. And once this is done, you can go ahead. Sa snapshot saved successfully. All right, so now my snapshot is saved. So I'm ready to go. So let's do this quick flight and see how it works. So packing brake is released. Let's go. 40% and one. Stable. N1 toga. Set takeoff thrust. Thrust set. Check, throttle hold. Rotate. Rotate. Gear up. And nav. 400 feet, enough speed, and let's put command A. And we have arm and nav VNAV speed. Nice departure. Now the aircraft starts to accelerate to what 230 knots. So we have a positive speed trend vector. Let's go flaps one. We pass bug one, positive trend toward up, flaps up. Mm. 
Now we are turning right to join our uh, right hand downwind. 1000 to level off. Flaps up, no light. I'll turn off taxi lights, the engine start switches. And we are going to put the auto brake off and landing gear off. Here what I will do is already select auto brake 2 as it is a short flight and we have VNAV pad 4000 feet, 250 knots, all good. So let's do the uh, after takeoff checklist. Engine bleeds are on, packs auto, landing gear is up and off and flaps up, no lights. After takeoff checklist completed. Let's go for the descent checklist, please. Pressurization landing altitude is zero. Set, recall. Checked. Auto brake is two. Landing data. Hello, VREF and minimum. So, VREF. Flap sturdy, that's going to be 143. So, we expect 148 as we approach. And the minimum is visual today. We are doing uh, visual flight, so I will not set any minimum and approach briefing. We are doing the ILS runway 3-1 right for uh, training purposes. Nav setting is done now, so I will select the ILS on both sides. The course is 314-314, and that's confirmed here on the uh, FMC. And we will be visual for a full landing on runway 3-1 right. In case of missed approach, runway ding 3,000 feet. Briefing is completed. Approach checklist, the altimeter is one, uh, 3024, set one time, two time, and 3024, three times, reading 4,000 feet. Approach checklist is complete. All right, so we are on a right hand downwind. And as you can see, I do not have to fly anything. I just let the aircraft in LNAV, VNAV. And the aircraft is doing its pattern that has been designed by FSI panel. So here, during that time, feel free to uh, do your briefing to set your minimum as per the chart. If you're flying in IMC, of course, you can fly this in IMC and get ready for the uh, descent and the approach. Here we can see on the screen on the uh, MF on the map display that we have a top of descent. So the aircraft will start its descent right there and we have a decel point which is fluctuating a little bit don't worry about that. What's going to happen is the aircraft will start to slow down just before top of descent to what you see in descent page. And it's going to start its descent right there. At descent point, this is where we should start to put some flaps to configure the aircraft for landing. And we just need to give the autopilot the clearance to descend. So for that, we are checking for the next altitude where we can go. So you can see in that kind of approach, today we have Malde 3000 or above. So I could set 3000 here. So that's the next altitude we can descend and the aircraft then will be able to descend. If you don't set a lower altitude here at the top of descent, the aircraft will not start its descent and you are going to revert to VNAV Alt and then you will have to mitigate probably in vertical speed to go down and intercept your glide slope. So right there, we are about five miles before turning on final in Kennedy runway 31 right. We still have 250 knots. And we cannot see the airport anymore. No, too late. But here we are on the right hand downwind. Now we can hear that the aircraft is slowing down. Top of descent is coming very, very soon. And we have a bit of uh, tailwind right now, which is good. So headwind during final approach. And we will see how the aircraft is doing that. So what we're expecting now is a top of descent retard. So basically the thrust will close and we should start a descent. So let's see if that's happening correctly. In the meantime, I will set already the inbound heading. 314. Here we go. Top of descent. Retard, as expected. Trust is retarding. We will have the next mode we expect here is arm. 
and we have the diesel point so now you will see the speed here dropping toward up arm as expected that's perfect 1000 to level off for the 3000 feet at Malde we are about 12 miles final the speed is coming to up let's go flaps one Now we should be turning final. You can see that I'm exactly on the glide slope. That's perfect. So I can arm now the approach. I have valid information. So let's arm the approach. Localizer, Vorlock is captured. Glide slope is captured. 3000 feet is set for Mr. Approach. As easy as that. We are on final in uh, Kennedy. So that works perfectly well if you want to practice some uh, procedures. As you have to do the takeoff, you have to do the checklist, you have to prepare the approach quickly, and you find yourself on final approach. Okay, let's go flaps five. And bug five. Now, once you are in this configuration, the 737, you can basically wait down to radio altimeter alive between 2,000 to 2,500 feet to go gear down flaps 15. That will be, that will be a perfect uh, timing for a, a stabilized criteria. So don't need to rush. Once you are flap five and the speed is below 200 knots, you're safe. You just let the aircraft uh, uh, dive. Like you can see now, she's gliding. Sorry, that's what that's the word I was looking for. Gliding toward the runway in idle thrust. So you are very, very good in the fuel saving and you just let the aircraft glide once you hear radio altimeter alive 2500 feet now you start thinking about the next step which will be gear down flaps 15 and this is a good advice go between 2000 to 2500 and passing 2000 feet then you can go with flaps 30. radio altimeter alive so we'll show you exactly how it works with that technique so you just wait here around 2000 between 2000 to 2500 let's go now gear down do the items arm the speed brake and we go flaps 15. we can bug 15. now we are passing as you can see 2000 feet radio altimeter that's fine we check the speed and we go for flaps 30. Check the approach. So we said 148. And we can do the landing checklist. So engine start switches, they are continuous. Speed brake is arm. Landing gear is down. Flaps 30, green light. Landing checklist completed. And now you can see that the speed is coming toward the approach. We are fully stabilized, the checklist is completed, and we are just about 1,000 feet. We have a good margin, so that's working perfectly well. Great. Now we are, doing to, we are going to do a manual landing, so I will disconnect the automation, let's say at around 500 feet. So we are looking now for the puppy. As soon as we have the puppy, we could revert to visual. Now for the time being, it's not very clear. So I'll just let the autopilot fly for me. 1000 feet stabilized, Mr. Approach altitude 3000 feet set. We're gonna have crosswind from the left around 10 knots. Doesn't look too bad. All right, let's take the auto throttle off. Auto thrust is off. And autopilot is off, FD. 500 check. Four hundred check. Fifty. 
30, 20, 10. All right, speed break up. Reverse is normal. And slowing down to 60 knots. 60 knots out of reverse. And we are stopping on the runway. All right, here we go. We did a uh, complete uh, patterns. And I will just show you now what you can do with your snapshot. If you want to try it the exact same pattern, then you can just reload your, uh, your uh, snapshot that we took. So let me just quickly reposition the aircraft at the threshold and you will see what I mean. So I'll pause the simulator and i see you just now in a couple of seconds. All right, here we are. The simulator has been restarted and I'm on runway 31 right again. Imagine this is on another day and you want to do the exact same thing. So as you can see, I have everything wrong again. This time I don't need to set the weight because then uh, this is saved in a snapshot. So this is basically if you want to do the exact same exercise as you did before, as we just did. So we are going to, to use the snapshot feature. So here nothing is set. I just loaded my aircraft and I'm going to uh, look in FSI panel to load the snapshot. So let's have a look at FSI panel. Here we are, we just landed so we can have a quick look at the landing report of our approach. So we can see that we joined final, everything is good and the lateral and vertical deviation was okay. Landing was in a good distance. Nice bank, so basically everything is good. We had the rate of descent a little bit high on uh, short final. And we crossed the threshold at 49 feet, 50 feet is the good number, so we are good. So good running report, and now we are going to load the snapshot, so click on load snapshot. Here you will find the KGFK31 right, right hand pattern, the one we just saved together. Select it, and we basically just need to click on move aircraft. So I'm going to click on move aircraft, and let's see what happened in a simulator. So here preparing my control, do not touch anything, just wait and it will take a couple of seconds until FSI panel tells you that you have the control. So you can see here working on the uh, FMC. And we are waiting for the message here, aircraft ready, all your brake. As the parking brake is set by FSI panel, the aircraft is ready. And here we go. So you can see that we have the all complete Setting correct, we have the auto brake RTO, we have the whole routing, the FMC speed, nav setting, everything is done for us. You can just release your parking brake and try the same exercise. So the idea of this video, guys, was to show you how you can do right hand, left hand circuits anywhere you want in the world. And you can repeat that exercise as you wish. And if you want to use the, the snapshot feature, that's a good thing if you want to practice quicker and if you want, if you have set something, like if you change some of the settings done by FSI panel, then of course it will be saved a part of your snapshot. All right, any question or comment, please drop it in the section down below. As always, stay safe and please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time for another video. Bye-bye.